Hey everybody, Rob here at eTrailer.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the Kurt Class 2 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2018 Ford EcoSport. Now here's what our hitch is going to look like once we have it installed. I really like the hitch because the cross tube is going to be hidden behind the bumper here and all we're going to see is that receiver tube sticking out so it has a really clean, almost factory appearance to it. Now it is going to be that Class 2 hitch which means it's going to give us an inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter receiver tube opening and it's going to be great for things like bike racks or some of those smaller cargo carriers to make room on the inside of our EcoSport. Regardless of how we're going to use our hitch, all of the accessories are going to mount through the hitch pin hole here on the side. Now the hitch is going to accept a standard half inch pin and clip. Now these are not going to come with the hitch, but you can find them here at eTrailer.com along with some locking devices to make sure your accessories are secure and anti-rattle devices to cut down on that annoying rattle and slop inside the receiver tube when we're driving down the road. And if you are towing a trailer, obviously you need a spot to hook up your safety chains. Here we have a loop style welded to the bottom of the receiver tube. And with most size hooks like this one here, we'll have plenty of room to get them hooked on or take them off. But at the same time, if you have those really large oversized hooks, we still have plenty of room to get those hooked on or take them off with really without any kind of interference. Now, whether you're gonna be using your hitch for towing a trailer or for more recreational purposes, you wanna make sure that it's gonna be up to the task that you put it to. So as far as the weight rating goes, our hitch is going to have a 350 pound tongue weight. That's going to be the maximum downward force at the end of the receiver tube. Now to put that in perspective, we'll really be able to maximize the carrying capacity of some of those smaller cargo carriers or be able to carry maybe two, if not three bikes with this if we want to hit the trail with some friends. Now as far as the gross trailer weight rating goes, our hitch is going to have a 3500 pound rating. That's how much the hitch can pull, but that does include the trailer and everything we have loaded on it. With all those numbers in mind, you do want to check your EcoSports owner's manual because those are going to be the ratings for the hitch and not for our car. Now I'd like to give you a few measurements and these are going to help you out whenever you're looking for accessories for your new hitch. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of our bumper is right about three and a half inches. Now that measurement's going to come in handy when you're looking at folding accessories to make sure you have enough room and you can put those accessories in the upright stored position without making contact with the rear bumper. From the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening is right about 12 and 3 quarter inches. Now at that height I would definitely recommend a bike rack or a cargo carrier with a raised shank. That way we can get a little bit more ground clearance out of it. But now that we've seen what our hitch looks like and gone over some of the features, let's go through the installation together. To begin our installation we want to come to the very back of our EcoSport. Now, in our particular application, we don't have this trim panel here, but if you look at the very bottom, you can see several holes that are spanning across the bottom of the fascia here. Normally, there would be a panel right here. Yours may or may not have it in there, but if you do, you need to pull all these screws out. They're going to be a five and a half millimeter. And then if you come inside, just underneath the trunk pan itself, we're going to have two studs. One of them is going to have the heat shield attached to it with a plastic nut. The other side, there's nothing on it because the panel's not there, but these two nuts would also hold that panel in, so you'd remove those and pull that entire panel out. So now if we move in just a little bit towards the front and towards the passenger side, we'll find our muffler at the very back. And on the outside of that, we'll find our rubber isolator and hanger holding everything in place. I'm gonna grab some spray lubricant. I'm just gonna spray down the hanger and the isolator. This is gonna make it a lot easier to get that hanger off. Typically, you can just grab a pry bar, and we'll use the muffler and the hanger itself to kind of pry against that rubber so we can get it loose and get it to slide all the way off. Now, clearly the muffler didn't come down that far, so if we move forward, right above the rear axle here, we'll have another isolator so we can remove the exhaust there. Now we don't have to worry about the exhaust coming down too far because the axle is going to stop it before it can come down any further than we need it to. But again, we'll just use the pry bar and use the muffler to kind of use this leverage to pry against it. The main goal is just to get that rubber isolator off. Once you have the exhaust lowered, we want to move over to the driver's side frame rail. 
Now at the very back, you'll see that we have two bolts going into the bottom, and then we're also gonna have two bolts going into the side of the frame on the inside. We're gonna remove all four of these, so you wanna grab yourself a 15 millimeter socket and pull those out. Now because of the space here, you may need to use a short socket and a ratchet to take these out. You want to make sure you hold on to all the hardware that we pull out. But now we're going to move over to the passenger side of the frame rail. Now on the other side of the frame rail, you'll see we're still going to have those two bolts on the bottom as well as the inside of the frame rail. Well, we only need to remove the two on the bottom, so we'll use that same 15 millimeter socket and pull both of those out. Now this isn't completely necessary, just makes it a little bit easier, but whenever we removed our exhaust and the rubber isolator here, we actually go ahead and if we just pull the isolator off of that hanger that's still attached to the frame, it'll make it a little bit easier us in the long run because we'll have a little bit more room to work right by the frame rail here. So again, we want to hold on to the rubber isolator and the hardware that we pulled out. Now with the next set of hands, we're going to lift our hitch up. Typically, you want to get one side in just so that we can kind of get everything in place, lifted in position. But once we have our hitch lifted up and lined up with the existing holes, we're going to take the factory hardware and you want to get at least one bolt in on each side. That way the hitch will support itself and we can work on getting the rest of the hardware in place. Well, we're just going to be using the existing hardware that was already there to secure our hitch. Now once you have all your factory hardware back in place, you'll notice that we're going to have one more mounting location on the passenger side. Now this one's going to be furthest forward, and you'll see it's going to line up with that hole and a hole through the frame. So what we want to do is, is we want to grab our handle nut. Basically it's just going to have a handle with a nut welded on it. Now we want to take it and kind of estimate. We want it to land on the inside of the frame right at our attachment point here and we have a large access hole just forward of that. So we're gonna take our handle nut, and I'm just gonna put a slight bend in it so I can have better control of it. Feed it in through the opening, and then if you look from the bottom, we can see that the threads line up inside that hole, and again, I can move it using the handle. So then we'll grab our half-inch bolt, and a conical tooth washer. There's little teeth on there. You want to make sure they're facing up towards the hitch. But then we'll just get it started by hand, making sure we can hold on to that handle so we can get the nut started. We're just going to loosely get it started in place, secure everything down. Then once we have everything in place, we can't always bend that handle so where it won't interfere with our muffler, it'll be pretty close to being flat against the bottom of the frame. And we'll just come back with that 15 millimeter socket and tighten up all of our factory bolts. You wanna make sure you come back with a torque wrench and you're gonna to torque all the hardware down to the specified amount of the instructions. For our half inch bolt, I'm using a three quarter inch socket, and you do want to pay attention to the specifications because there is a different value for the factory bolts than there is for that half inch bolt. But we'll go back through and make sure we repeat that for all of our remaining hardware. Now when we go to put our exhaust back up, I always find it easier if we take our hanger and the rubber isolator here, put a little bit more spray lubricant on that, both the hangers, and I'm actually going to get it started on the frame rail first. That way I can use that opening to my advantage on the hitch. I'll get it started on the frame, and I can lift my exhaust up, 
slide it over without it worrying about hitting the hitch here. Then we can just move forward and hook the second one further up. But once you have your hitch tightened down and your exhaust is put back up, that'll finish up your look and installation of the Curt Class 2 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2018 Ford EcoSport.